today on Running to Him. The men who discovered Christ told others about Christ, with whom they now had a relationship. Today's reading is John 1, verse 35, through chapter 2, verse 25, and we'll concentrate on 1, 40-45. John 1, 40-45 says, One of the two who had heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he found first his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. He brought him to Jesus, and Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day he proposed to go to Galilee, and he found Philip. And Jesus said to him, Follow me. And now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the laws and also the prophets wrote. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now one of the first things we see about the disciples is that they were not afraid to tell others about what they'd found. Their lives' focus changed and they desired to tell others what they found in that instant. Why are we different from them? I've always struggled to strike up a conversation with a stranger and move immediately to a conversation about Christ unless the context of the meeting assumes that conversation. Even the first person I prayed with about his need for Christ was in a movie theater showing a Christian film, The Hiding Place. But the disciples didn't seem to have that trouble, and I've always wondered why. In reading today's passage, I may have stumbled on the answer. Everything is context. The disciples all had something in common with whom they spoke about Christ, and they were all Jewish and had a relationship because of who they were. Unfortunately, we in the United States don't have the same relationship with most of those around us. We live in an anti-religious, anti-supernatural world. Now, we played a game once at a religious conference. Six or so of us sat in a circle, all looking at the leader, and the leader said something like, I'm having a party, and you have to guess the right words to enter into it. We spent almost 30 minutes trying to guess the words which would allow us to enter. We could ask questions, but we couldn't directly ask them to give us the words to say. That was really frustrating. Only one of our group guessed the words and two let her in. Those who are not familiar with Christianity are not familiar with our internal Christian language. When we speak to them about Christ, we have nothing in common to bridge that conversation or culture gap. We are uncomfortable, and say are they. If we're going to present Christ to someone, we must be on common ground. That requires we know a little bit about them before our message means anything. Asking a probing question or two might open the door. Still, most of the time, developing a relation through an everyday activity or subject will make it easier to be in the conversation in earnest. I have a flagpole at my house with the American flag and an Air Force Auxiliary Chaplain's flag below it. So when I am walking in our neighborhood and I meet someone and they ask where I live, I tell them that the house would do flags. Invariably, they ask about the second flag, which is an opening to talk about the chaplaincy and ultimately Christ. Find what is familiar to you and the person with whom you are speaking, and that will open the door to speaking about Christ. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.